One of the things that I appreciate most about I4CP is their dedication to rigorous research that's deeply, deeply practical. So I'm very honored today to get to talk about some rigorous research that's deeply, deeply practical that we've run in my own organization. I'm going to talk a little bit about a little bit of a pet project we did a year or so ago looking at team effectiveness. Before I jump into the research, I have to do the obligatory company context commercial. We do more than your laptops. Uh, doing all kinds of fascinating stuff. I'd be very happy to talk to you about driverless cars or drones or security or anything else at the break. Uh, but given that I only have nine minutes and 15 seconds, I'm going to jump into my content. Any research project that we do in my organization always has to start with a business challenge and more importantly, a business partner. There has to be someone in the organization who's feeling pain, who can co-create with us a solution. Because insight is worthless if it doesn't change the organization. At that point, it's just a party trick or an ego boost. So our challenge here was to take our historic and very, very, frankly, laser-focused uh, attention to individual excellence and supplement, extend what we knew about how to get results by adding a layer of team context information. This isn't rocket science. Uh, and in fact, it's not even new. People have been looking at teams for decades, but we'd been really laser focused on individual employees, on managers, leaders, we'd looked at employee engagement, but really we were focused on the individual as the level of analysis. So we ran through and said, gosh, what we can do, what can we do with data um, to really look at those team specific, those team unit of analysis variables that will help us be a little bit of a canary in a coal mine for before a team starts to fail and struggle. And this was something that was co-created with a particular part of our business uh, that was technologically and technically challenging and kind of sat between two really powerful parts of the business and had to be a little bit of a broker that translated kind of the pure egghead R&D into something that we could actually build. So it was a, uh, an organization that had to have very high uh, clarity, very high prioritization, very high uh, collaborative and communication skills, and also exceptionally high levels of technological rigor, and frankly, an area that really was hard to get right. Being good researchers, uh, we did this like you might do a master's project or really any great research project. We started with an ecosystem scan. We weren't the first people in the world to think of team effectiveness. What does the world know about this? What does the academic literature say? What are places our colleagues like uh, I4CP and others, our best practices in other places? What do we know that's likely to be true? And then how do we make this personal? Because uh, I'm sure your organizations are the same way. There's a lot of not invented here. Uh, really, I didn't come up with anything that was new under the sun, except that it felt very personal to the organization, except that it felt very relevant for the organization, and that let it be accepted. It was co-created with a particular part of the organization that was in pain, so they were really eager to find the results and do something with it. Once we'd done all of that qualitative work, the ecosystem scan, the deep interviews uh, and focus groups about what was the best team effectiveness, what was the best team you'd ever worked on, what were the attributes of that, of course we developed an assessment. We developed a diagnostic tool, and uh, without sharing all of the details of what's in it, I can share the highlights. I'll have about 30 uh, items in the current version. Over time, as we gain more data, we'll prune and hone it so that it's more laser focused and a lighter user experience. Uh, but we have five essential, uh, essential elements in it. I'm sure these are shocking to you, um, right? Team leadership really, really matters. The context of our team, including things like the workload being appropriate, really, really matter. The team composition and how they work together, things like teams providing feedback and kind of an uncomfortable item about, do we have the skills that we need? Uh, you know, is, is there a guy over here who's just dead weight? Uh, some of those things about how the team is built. The roles and goals, do I know what the heck I'm supposed to be doing here and do we have a good agreement on that? And can we do things like make a decent decision? Can we do that effectively? Can we communicate it? Um, how do we deal with conflict? Some of these things that really are fairly, uh, fairly predictable, but in order to, in order to make them uh, acceptable, we put them in the right language. We really had engineers uh, and managers co-creating them with us. And as a result, we were able to get good traction with this. A couple of the learnings that we had um, are both encouraging and, and kind of disheartening. Um, even our most effective teams can go to hell in a handbasket really quickly. 
Um, so that thing about roles and goals and team direction and team leadership are incredibly important. You can't just take a fantastic team and expect it to perform until the end of the earth, right? You can, you can break the magic. Similarly, fantastically cohesive teams can really suck. They can just absolutely fail to deliver. So how do we distinguish between those things? One thing we found empirically is that we can actually find team issues surfacing before performance starts to drop. I won't be able to talk about it today, I don't have enough time, but we were able to do this over time, over a period of over a year, and we could predict, we could use it as a canary in a coal mine when something was starting to go south. So this starts to give you a really useful OD and intervention tool. One other thing uh, that was both surprising and unsurprising, with CEOs you often sort of hear, yeah, they don't really know what's going on, they're too disconnected from the organization. Turns out the tr same is true even with frontline managers. Frontline managers in our, in our survey, and the, the data I'm talking about here today, uh, today includes about 400 people, uh, about 34 teams in this particular sample we're discussing. Uh, the team leaders were always super confident, like this is what it's like and I know that I'm right. I'm super on it, because of course they did. Uh, it turns out that they were often wrong. Uh, they often uh, had a pretty different perspective on something like roles or goals or, or some of those other context elements. Uh, and they were blind to the fact that they had uh, that they had some incorrect data or an incorrect assumption. And that's where this as a diagnostic for an, an OD intervention comes in really handy. Uh, if you're really convicted about something um, and I come in and I tell you that you're wrong, often that creates conflict. So how can we take that conflict out of the team and actually have that facilitated by consultant, by an organization effectiveness consultant, by a peer leader, do something to actually work through it, actually solve that team effectiveness problem. Um, I think I'm constitutionally incapable of doing a presentation that doesn't include some data, so I'll just include one light sample. Um, this particular research study had 34 teams, of course, because it's a validation study, I have to cut my sample in half, so 17 teams as a unit of analysis represents about 200 people. And we do have a lovely correlation that we can see. It's about uh, 0.6, um, this, which is pretty badass, frankly, as correlations go. I'm getting nodding, like, yes, that is okay. You did, you did good, good, girlfriend. Uh, and one of the things that's really obvious to me is the giant blank, where you don't see any high-performing teams that don't have these fundamentals. One of the things from an OD perspective that this lets us do is um, take some of those bottom performing, that's what would be the lower left-hand quadrant, and it gives us a diagnostic for how do we lift that floor on performance. Uh, we still have some things to do in terms of honing our instrument where we can find some of those low performing but super happy teams. How do we maybe nudge them up a little bit too? But there's some really great low hanging fruit in this sample and we've seen it repeated in, in future instances where there is a pretty consistent cluster of teams that just can't get themselves out of the muck and if we, we can use this diagnostic to help accelerate that process to get them reformed, to find where their pain is and to move them forward. So, what's next? I started the presentation by saying insight is worthless if it doesn't turn into action. One of the things that I'm really proud of is we've done this enough times that we've actually built uh, something similar to what Kathleen talked about this morning, sort of a meeting or a manager in a box. We have a little bit of an intervention in a box with this intervention, with some standard reports, and with some, here's what you do about it. If, if this cluster of items is low, here's the intervention. If this cluster of items is low, here's the intervention. Uh, and that's ready and available for our approximately 100 HR uh, organization effectiveness types of folks to walk in and help unsti unstick some stuck teams. We're also using what we found here, particularly the findings around uh, the leader, her or himself, as well as how do you actually structure a team. We're figuring that into some of our strategic discussions about how we rebuild the role of managers in the company. We're doing really big investments there. And we have a future aspiration to explore more of a money ball style approach where we're really looking at employee mix and how do we drive for optimal performance based on the kinds of things that we know about employee composition, team composition, et cetera. So we'll be able to deliver compelling results for the company. And with that, thank you for your attention. <laughs>